Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to part two of this uh, two-part tutorial on how to create a custom intro inside Cinema 4D. In this part, we're going to be jumping into Adobe After Effects CS6. And we're going to take what we just rendered in part one and we're going to finish up this project right now. So uh, once you have your image sequence rendered out, we're just going to go up to File, we're going to go to Import, and we're going to go to File. Uh, we're going to click on the folder that we saved, saved all of our... Uh, pictures in so in this case I just named the folder intro and we're just gonna click on the very first file here and make sure that it's uh, the formats TIFF and it is a TIFF sequence and then just press OK immediately you're gonna be prompted with this uh, box uh, you don't really need to play with anything here just press OK again and now we have our tip sequence once you see it appear up here we're just gonna click and drag it right into a new composition and if uh, once we do that, once we scrub the timeline here, you're going to see the animation that we created inside Cinema 4D. All right, before we get started here, I want to make a few things clear. A lot of what I'm going to be doing right now is going to be using third-party plugins that you will not have with Adobe After Effects CS6 by default. They are separate. You have to install them, and I'm pretty sure most all of them do cost money. Um, so just be aware of that before we begin. Um, obviously, you don't have to follow along exactly what I'm doing, but a lot of the third-party plugins that I will be using will help to make your overall animation look a lot better. So anyways, with that said, uh, the first plugin that we're going to be using here is RSMB. So that's Real Smart Motion Blur. That's going to add some motion blur to, this, um, to the motion. So let's go to RSMB here, go to Effect, click on that. Like I said, this is a third-party plugin, so you will not have this by default. You'll have to get it separately. Uh, but this basically just allows us to create uh, motion blur uh, real quick and easy. So uh, you can do this. You don't have to have a plugin to do this. You can do this in After Effects by default, but it's a little bit more complicated, and the outcome still isn't as good. So if you can get RSMB, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, it's definitely worth the money. Um, but anyways, uh, right here you're gonna see the blur amount and by default it's set to 0.5 and if we just scrub through the timeline here uh, you can see that that's not really doing much so we may need to crank that value up to say like 2 for example and that might be plenty it all depends on the kind of look you're going for so so maybe 2 isn't quite enough for me so I might want to bump that up to like say 2.5 and you know I don't want to overdo it here but I want it to be noticeable and we can also adjust the motion sensitivity. So if we bring that up, bring that number up, um, that's going to make it a little bit more blurry as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick uh, preview render real quick, and we'll see what we got. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Uh, just kind of check out the motion blur, see what it looks like. All right, so it's pretty subtle, but it's there, and you'll definitely be able to notice it in the end. So I'm pretty happy with that. So... What are we going to do next? Well, right now we're going to go up to Effect. Make sure your TIFF sequence is selected here. Um, we're going to go to Effect, go down to, where is it at? Color Correction, and then go to Curves. And we're basically just going to uh, adjust these curves. So I'm just going to click in this uh, middle, middle of this line here and drag, drag up a little bit. And then I'm going to click up here and drag it down just a little bit. And then if we drag this one down to make kind of a simple little S shape, you'll notice it brings in more detail, makes it more con more contrasted, I guess. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. So now we actually have a little bit more detail on the emblem, like so. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. You don't have to do a whole lot with that typically. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is going to be adding in a custom background that's why we rendered this out with an alpha channel so that we can put in something behind the actual animation itself so let's just go to right right click down here go to new go to solid and uh, we're not gonna worry about any of this stuff just press OK drag the black solid that's been created and drag it down below the tip sequence here and if we just uh, click on the solid we just created and press enter we can rename this and we'll just call it BG for background. All right, you're not going to notice anything yet, so we have to right click on this, go to effect, and then let's go down to generate and then go to ramp. 
and we're going to change the ramp shape from linear ramp to radial ramp. And now all we really have to do is adjust the start and end color here. So I'm going to go to the start color and let's make this um, kind of a dark blue but not real dark. And then let's go to the end color here and make, make it a little bit darker. And you may have to play around with this to kind of get what you're looking for. Um, you know, I may want to make this a little bit darker. So maybe something like that. All right, I'm not I'm not actually trying to make this like super good. I'm just basically demonstrating how to how to make an intro with all these different programs. So it isn't going to look spectacular, but you guys get the idea and can do whatever you want. So um, for me, that'll work for right now. Um, yeah, I think that's all right. So we'll move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and add the next effect here. So let's go up to effect. Make sure you got your chip sequence selected once again go to color correction and go to exposure. We're just going to add some exposure here and let me find a good frame to get an idea. Let's go ahead and go to exposure and let's increase this number to like 0.77 or something like that. And that's just going to basically make the overall logo uh, quite a bit brighter here as you can see. So it comes in like so and it turns out to be pretty bright. So uh, that's what exposure does obviously just kind of brightens things up and we can even mess with the offset here so it'll brighten up our text as well we can make that really odd <laughs> um, all right so I kind of like that you may have to play around with this depending on your exact um, animation but for me that looks all right so there is our animation we have right now we want to drag this down again getting a little bit washed out so that'll work for me and so there's our exposure okay so now we're just going to um, we're going to add in an optical flare so once again this is using a third-party plugin uh, it's video copilots optical flares most people have it but if you don't you'll have to go uh, get that otherwise alright so to do this we're just gonna go click on our black solid here we're gonna go to effect Go to Video Copilot, click on Optical Flares, it'll go ahead and launch this. We're going to change the render mode from On Black to Over Original. And I'm just going to place this one up uh, in the upper left hand corner here. Uh, but I'm also going to change the look of the flares. So let's go to Options here. And it's going to launch this window. And we can just choose something. So I'm going to click on Pro Presets and, and try to find something that I like here. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this though. So let's see here. That might look kind of cool. We can play with the color of this. The brightness of course. It's really all up to you guys. But it adds a nice little touch to the to the overall render so that's not looking too bad alright yeah I'm kinda liking that it's not that great but you guys get the idea I'm just strictly introducing uh, these tools and stuff on how to make an intro so um, yeah it looks okay so now say you want the intro to fade in what we could do is is right click go to new click on solid let's create another black solid press ok and let's press enter on this and just title this fade and what we're gonna do is click on this little down arrow here go to transform and we're just basically gonna keyframe the opacity so click this little stopwatch deal here to create a keyframe and about one second in it's gonna fade in so so change that value from 100 to 0 percent at about one second and you'll notice as we scrub through the timeline here it kinda of fades in to the animation and then when we want to fade out say about a second out we'll change this uh, we will make create another keyframe at 0 percent and then let's scroll to the end here and change this back to 100 
All right, so now we've got our two keyframes there, and if we scrub through the timeline, you can see that it fades in. And that appears, and then it slowly fades out. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, give this a quick render preview and see what we have so far. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Doesn't look too bad. Nothing special, but you guys get the idea. Um, you know, I'm kind of just going along right now as I record this tutorial, so I don't have anything set in mind exactly what I want to do. So I'm just kind of playing around here. All right, so I thought of something maybe we could add in here. We could do the Twitch plugin. So if we go select our tip sequence here and go to Effect, go to Video Copilot, and click on Twitch, uh, this will add a nice little effect to the overall animation. So let's, if you guys have Twitch, once again, uh, if you don't, you'll have to go get it. If you do, uh, that's great. Um, but once you get it, uh, go to effect, click on Twitch, and then we'll change the speed from say five to like two, and then go down to enable, and we'll enable say color, light, and maybe slide, and then we'll change the amount from 100 to say 60, and we may have to play around with this some more. Let's go ahead and give this a quick render preview and see what this looks like. All right, so this is what we have. All right, nothing too special there, but right now there's our basic uh, little intro that we've created. All right, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I want to let you guys be creative and uh, do your own thing here, but this is basically just to introduce uh, a lot of the different tools and plugins that you can use that will really help you out with your renders and make them look that much better. Um, this definitely isn't near as good as I could do. I mean, to me, this isn't that great, but like I said, this is just to basically show you how it's done and leave it up to you guys to create something really cool. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this two-part series. Uh, I think that will do it. Um, oh, and one more thing. I almost forgot. I'll show you guys how to uh, save this in case you don't already know. I almost forgot. So once you get what you, get what you're satisfied with, go up to File, go to Export, click on Add to Render Queue, change the Output Module from Lossless to say QuickTime, for example, or maybe it's AVI. It depends on you know whatever system or codec you have. Uh, so I'm gonna choose mine as QuickTime. Go to Format Options. Change your video codec if it's set to animation to say H.264 and we can drop the video quality down slightly just to keep a slightly smaller file size and then just press OK and if you have any kind of sound effects or audio you're going to want to make sure that you check on audio output and then go to format options and I would definitely change the audio codec from uncompressed to AAC. It won't really damage the quality of the audio but it will really keep your file size down so that's if you have audio. If you don't, then this isn't going to be necessary, of course. Just press OK, and then we're going to output to, click on that, name it whatever, choose where you're going to save it, press save, and then just go ahead and hit this render button. And what it's going to do is going to go ahead and go through and render out what we've done here in Adobe After Effects CS6, and you'll have your final uh, video to watch. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this two-part tutorial once again. If you did like it, if you did learn something, please leave a like, uh, comment with any suggestions or comments you may have, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace out.